What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hey, before you leave, do consider subscribing and smashing that like button. All right, this is part two of the Alien vs. Predator Arcade 1-Up build. And we're going to give the monitor some love. We're going to work on the bezel. We're going to install the marquee, and then we're going to go ahead and work on the uh, HDMI breakout board in the back. So we're going to start that process by taking out the control panel and taking out all the screws that hold the bezel in place. And the reason that we have to take out that control panel is to access this bottom row of four screws. There's going to be uh, one screw on either side of the monitor. You can kind of see that halfway up. But unfortunately, to get that last row of screws out at the very top, uh, you're going to have to take out the marquee and the speaker uh, support panel as an assembly. Now to do that, you're obviously going to have to take out the two screws that hold the marquee in place. And you also want to take out these screws that I have highlighted here. It's just going to allow you to spread this, uh, the control panel apart and get that out a lot easier. And with all that out of the way, we can easily get to those top four screws that hold the bezel in place. And then we're going to take this off the machine and set it off to the side so we can work on it a little bit easier. Because this, uh, unfortunately, this replacement bezel is not going to just be a drop-in replacement. There's going to be some cutting and fitting involved. All right, and here we have the actual artwork itself. And you can see that the size is going to be really, really close. Uh, top and bottom matches up perfectly, but the, uh, the decal is just a little bit wider than the bezel itself. That's no big deal, but I'm putting this on now to kind of get an idea of the area that's going to be cut out. And then we're going to set this off to the side and transfer all the measurements over to the new, uh, the new decal. We're going to make several marks and I'm going to outline the area that I'm going to cut and then I'm also going to use the ruler as a guide uh, for the blade. The, these marks are really just going to help you know, keep me oriented on the piece because there's so much graphically going on. It's easy to sort of lose yourself. Uh, and so I'm just putting these marks on just to just to help keep it all straight because this is kind of a one and done thing You screw this up and uh, now you've got to go back and order a new piece and it just takes time so Really want to measure twice and definitely cut once for sure I went and added an extra precaution here and I put down a just a towel to kind of keep uh, keep this thing from getting scratched. And obviously you want to give this thing a good wipe down with just some glass cleaner to really make sure that it's clean and ready to accept the new decal. Now this is definitely the hardest part for sure. So you can see what I did. I just uh, cut the backing paper off the very top and I dealt with just that area. Uh, and then once that was set, I went about, uh, I guess about three or four inches uh, working at a time. It can be very frustrating. This is a little bit thicker uh, vinyl, so it can take a little bit of repositioning. So if you put it down and it's not exactly where you want it, you can peel it up. But just don't cut off a lot of backing paper. I guess that's my number one tip. Just work with small sections at a time. Get that where you want it. Make sure you cut out for all your uh, mounting screw holes and you can have results like this. Okay, now it's time to address that marquee, which is really going to be simple since we just uh, took a, a separate lit piece and applied that decal to that. We're just going to swap the two really here. So there's just two screws that hold this in place. Whenever I put my dowels in, I use a little bit of wood glue. So it was kind of sticky, but it, it didn't damage anything when I took it apart. So just reinsert that, line up those dowels, put in these two screws, and we're ready to head back to the cabinet. Let's go. All right, this really is the fun part. All the hard work's done. Now it's just time to put everything back in place. Uh, and also take your time. You don't want to trap any lint or dirt between... Uh, this bezel and the screen. Go ahead and line everything up, get those dowels where they need to be. And then obviously put all your screws back, especially those two that we took out of the angle bracket that holds the monitor in place. Could be easy to overlook those. Now with the control panel in place, you see I used that Capcom diamond plate pattern, uh, but the scale's a little bit off, and so is the color, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. All right, so now let's go to the back side of the monitor that's been stripped of its PCB, and we're gonna install a new HDMI controller board mount that I found from an eBay seller. It comes with instructions, uh, hardware, and a Allen wrench. So the first thing we're gonna do is utilize the two screw holes that held the stock PCB in place. And we're gonna lock down the uh, the board there. We also want to separate the keyboard from the HDMI controller. We're going to mount this first and kind of curl up that ribbon cable behind it. 
You're going into plastic thread, so don't over tighten these. Just snug enough to hold the board in place. Once again, you don't want to kink this, just sort of curl up this ribbon cable, because it's going to be sort of held back behind the, uh, the actual HDMI board itself. Four screws hold this in place. This just really cleans up the installation of this. There's no double-sided tape being used at all. Now I use a little test of tape to clean this up and make it look uh, nice and factory. Make sure your red wires to the right when you make this connection on the board. And the instructions show that the ground cable goes to the back of the monitor, but I'm actually going to change this and go back to the board. That's the way I've always done that, and I know that works. So that's the way I'm going to go. Just going to kind of route this behind here, tuck it in nice and neat, reinstall the screw, and we're done. Now this bracket really is a nice 3D printed piece. It's got smooth sides. Um, just sort of gives all these boards a home. It's better than double-sided tape. I think the front turned out great. I'm anxious to get into this control panel and finish up this project, but let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and I will see you next time.